course, is the impression a lot of our children may have today. But anyone who's actually a scientist would never believe in the creation model of human life described in the Bible over Darwin's theory of evolution. In movies like the one in which we began this program, and countless other television programs, magazine and newspaper articles like it, have certainly done a good job in brainwashing the public into thinking that. The reason why evolution succeeds in society today is not because of the science, because I was doing science and I saw it wasn't working. What I see though is that it was suppressing the truth, it's suppressing data, suppressing science that actually contradicts the beliefs and the ideas of evolution. So evolution survives because of censorship. I don't think secular scientists will ever dump the idea of evolution per se. I certainly would say that Darwinian evolution has some problems that many secular scientists are starting to recognize. Throughout most of the last century, there have been a, a large number of leading biologists like Grasset that have, that have never accepted the Darwinian explanation of evolution. Indeed, on the continent of Europe, probably until shortly after World War II, you could say that the majority of biologists were not Darwinian evolutionists. There's a stigma in the major universities, and you probably go underground in your secular universities and keep your position quiet, because if you don't, you get fired. I know some of my trusted colleagues who did not follow that, and as a result, lost their great positions. And in fact, the, the opposition is very, very strong. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very emotional. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll just come after you, you know, to try to get you to change your viewpoint or they'll fire you. To Dr. Richard Lumsden, former professor of biology at Tulane University and Medical School and the former dean of the graduate school, evolution was science, whereas creation was merely religion. And he taught as much to his students. What I would try to get across is that science is science. Science deals with the real world, with real phenomena. Uh, we don't bring into such discussions inferences of supernatural. Dr. Lumsden, who studied at Tulane, Harvard, and Rice, couldn't believe it when the Louisiana State Legislature passed a law that if evolution were taught in the public school classroom, then equal time had to be made for creation science. 
My reaction to that was just total consternation. Who are these people telling us, PhD level scientists, how to teach and what to teach uh, regarding science? So uh, I, I just thought the whole thing was, was, was just absolutely absurd. But it was not the energy of a supernatural nature. I was prompted at that point to give a lecture on the uh, origin of life, giving creation its due with as much mockery as I could summon. Truly, in the beginning was the Word, but the Word was hydrogen. After that class, one of his graduate students came up to him and said, Great lecture, Doc. Well, that got my attention. Flattery always did. And she said, but I have some questions. And indeed, she did. She had a, a legal pad, and I could see line after line after line after line. So they had an appointment, which ended up lasting longer than anticipated. The appointment also ended up changing Dr. Lumsden's life. Now, I'm not trying to challenge anything. I just want to get my science straight. That's fair enough. Okay. That's fair enough. Last month, you taught how mutations were genetic disasters. How, by natural selection, can they randomly produce new and better structures? Aren't the odds of the random assembly of genes mathematically impossible? You've uh, had your share of mathematics. Let's see if we can't figure that out. Not only were we talking about a mathematical impossibility, we were talking about a physical and chemical impossibility, which gave me pause. Genes, that might be 10 to the 200th, 10 to the... Hmm. Those are pretty formidable odds, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Where exactly in the fossil record is the evidence for progressive evolution? The transitional forms between the major groups? You know, most of them, come to think of it, are fully formed kinds in their own right. After much study and soul-searching, Dr. Lumsden became a creationist first, and then a Christian. Steve, 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 Steve,